Well, hello there. Welcome to our Friday night uh, demo. I am really excited you're here. I have got a pretty interesting and pretty cool painting, hopefully, in store for you. So I'm um, excited to show you what I got and uh, hopefully come out with a really, really cool acrylic pour. So welcome everyone. Hey, Lily is here. Lily was here early. She is excited and ready to go. Monique is here. Hey, Monique. Uh, uh, Barbara is here. Hello, Barbara. That's awesome. Uh, Carla has joined us and Pat is here. Fantastic. Carla's got popcorn. Um, we are ready to go. All right, cool. So um, I'm going to be doing a double cup pour tonight, a.k.a. a kiss pour. Um, we're doing the double cup pour is our technique of the month inside the membership, as you all know. And we did uh, a walkthrough on this on Wednesday and here it is behind me. It's all dry. I put it up behind me. Turned out pretty nice. I am pretty pleased with it. So we're going to be doing something, you know, similar to that tonight. Um, and I'll show you the colors in a minute. It's a pretty interesting color palette, kind of a complementary color scheme in a way. And I'll kind of talk about that uh, as we get going. So right on. I'm excited. Let's do it. So I'm working on a 18 by 24 tonight. That's a big one. It's an older canvas that I have uh, previously worked on and I scrubbed it or um, what do you call it? Scraped it, scraped it, scrubbed it. I did a lot to it. So uh, I'm working on that one. And uh, this is about the last time I'm going to pour on this. So hopefully it turns out to be a good painting. So, all right, cool. So let me flip the camera and I'll show you the colors we're using. If you have any questions, of course, put them in the comments and uh, off we go. So let me flip over here. And here we go. So 18 by 24, like I said, an older canvas uh, that I had scraped off and uh, I had poured a few different things on here, unhappy with them. So hopefully tonight we'll have a, a winner and uh, it'll be cool. So I've got a big old cup of paint right here. This is going to be our base coat and one solid color in one of our cups. So I'm going to be using my beakers, my my cool um, kind of skinny beakers for my, as my two cups for this one. So I'm going to be putting just this solid color in one of them. And in the other one, these three uh, very bright ish colors. So I've got this orange here. Um, and so this is a blue kind of a, it's a very neutralized blue green in a way. It's a kind of a bluish green, which is kind of a complementary color scheme to this orange red palette here. So in this cup, this is mostly a, a blue gray color, which is from Liquitex Basics. And I put in some white, just a small amount of the Liquitex Basics titanium white in there. And I wanted to lighten it up a little bit. And this is kind of a, a slightly bluish green color, um, but uh, it's a beautiful color. I really like using that one a lot. And right here, we've got this super bright orange, which is, I love using this orange. It's a metallic orange from Artist Loft. And I also, I cut this usually with, with a gold from Liquitex Basics or any gold you want to use. This one out of the tube straight, is kind of, it's a little too bright for me. It's still very bright. It's a little too bright, but it's a little too artificial looking. It doesn't look very natural, this orange. So I like to add something to it always uh, to make it look a little more natural. And so uh, I added gold. I love putting gold in there. Um, and we still have this super bright orange and it's a very pretty uh, orange color. And right here, we've got a crimson and this is Master's Touch uh, crimson. And also I put some orange in here. So we've got, we brightened it up a tiny bit from just the tube color. So that's what's in our second cup here. It's a very nice, uh, red, um, which I like the little crimsony orangish red. And down here we have got, um, kind of this dark reddish brown color. And that's mostly Van Dyke Brown from Amsterdam, my favorite brown, I think, but I've also put in 
our metallic orange and some crimson to warm it up a little bit and add a little more of that orange. So the metallic orange has a little bit of sparkle to it. So all of these colors uh, have a little bit of that in there. So these are all kind of mixed with the same stuff in there. So that ke keeps it very cohesive in a unified uh, color palette. And that is going to be a complement to our blue base coat and our blue that's in our, one of our cups. So let me move all these out of here. And I'll talk to you about what I'm going to do here. So basically, uh, I, I'm designing myself a painting that has negative space in it. So the blue will be our base coat and half of our pour. And so I'm putting myself in the best position to have some cool negative space. Um, and what I'm going to do is normally for an 18 by 24, I like to, you use about 13 and a half ounces for a standard rain pour. So this is a double cup pour. So I'm dividing that in two and I'm probably going to go a little less. So probably about six ounces in each cup. So I can kind of design some interesting negative, negative space, hopefully. So we'll see how it goes as we get into it. But uh, let's get started. I'm going to, uh, this time I'm going to put my base coat on my, on, well, actually, no, I got to do this first. So I need to have the, <laughs> the right amount of paint in my beaker. So I'm going to pour it in here first. And by the way, this is uh, my easy formula. So it's uh, two parts flow trial, one part paint and just enough water to get it to the number one consistency. This is the thickest consistency I like to use. And uh, that works really well for ring pours um, and things like that. You could use it for flip cups as well. But uh, the number one is kind of the thickest I like. So I'm just gonna spread this over here and getting a little glitchy it looks like with the camera hopefully that will clear up so just putting on a nice thin layer and then as I pour uh, if any of the base coat shows that's totally fine uh, I'm kind of hoping some of it will show that will help with our negative space pour I might have to add a little more here So here we go. I'm never, I'm not worried about the edges at all. Just the surface edges will all get covered as we tilt and stretch the paint. I need a little more over here. And here we go. So just take your time spreading your base coat on. Uh, you, this, you know, I, I like to use a base coat always. It's not absolutely necessary, but uh, for this particular type of pour, using like hopefully hope, hoping for a cool negative space painting, you kind of have to put on some kind of a base coat. So, but you could always um, pour your cup and then do a. Um, pour your base coat around your paint puddle. That's another way to do it. I don't usually do it that way, but uh, it also works. And there we go. We've got our base coat on. We are ready to go with that. Maybe I'll give that a little torch. Let's wipe off my knife here. I've got my torch handy and Let's give it a little bit of a, a torches popping air bubbles. There we go. I'm, I think we've got that. I'm going to just scooch this over here, move my cup of blue and then start layering my other colors. Now, when you're using a beaker or 
a measuring cup or something that has a spout, you want to kind of keep in mind the direction you're layering your paints in. Um, a, lot, a lot of the times I'll layer the paints in the spout side, or you can go the opposite side. I think I'm going to go the opposite side with this one. And of course, the first color you put in, which is going to be the orange, is the last color usually that comes out of your cup. So that'll kind of form the center of your composition. So keep that in mind as you layer your paints. I'm probably going to be doing two to three layers here. I want a lot of orange in there. So I'm using a little more orange than the red or the, the kind of reddish brown. But I do want those in there as well. I want a nice range of values. Um, and they should uh, work well together, we hope. So that's pretty much all of the orange, a little bit of the red. And I think that's it. I'm going to just put in, keep it with the two layers of our red brown. And so this is mostly an orange and red cup of paint. And I think we're good to go there. So I've got my cups layered there. They both have about six ounces of paint in them. Now what I want to do, and I don't all usually talk about this or I haven't talked about it much, but uh, the direction you pour your paints on. Now I'm going to be holding probably the blue in my right hand or the orange in my right hand. I haven't decided yet, but however you hold your paints and pour them onto your canvas, that's going to determine the kind of where all the color goes, you know, on your, on your canvas. So if you're pouring them this way, and if you're square to your canvas, you're going to get a blue side and then you're going to get an orange and red side. Um, and you could also pour, let me just turn this just to, as, and as an example here. So if you pour them this way in the center, you're going to get a blue side here and an orange side here. So you can kind of determine where you want, you know, your colors to be located on your, on your surface. And uh, sometimes what I like to do is put my canvas at an angle and pour with the canvas at an angle. I'm going to be pouring straight. It's easier to pour straight. You can concentrate a little bit better instead of trying to pour at an, you know, a crazy angle like this. So I'm going to keep this kind of at an angle and then I'll be pouring my blue here or blue and orange like that. And they'll be kind of off. They won't be like lined up with the canvas. Not that there's anything wrong with doing that, but I like to add a little bit of, um, I don't like everything to be lined up. Usually I like things to be off center, um, and at kind of angles and things like that. So we'll see how that goes. And, uh, Kathy is asking a question. Um, and she's asking, uh, she can watch recording, but yeah, is the orange straight from the tube? No, uh, this, I mentioned this before, metallic orange is mixed with gold. So it's not straight from the tube, but you can see all of the colors. If you watch the replay, they're all there for you. And let's see here. Somebody flipped the uh, camera over and, uh, uh, Barbara's asking actually, have I ever given a tour of this studio? I've not given a tour of this current studio. Uh, and tonight won't be the night because it's a total disaster zone, but, uh, maybe in the future I will, uh, give you a little bit of tour after I clean it up, but, uh, that won't be, um, tonight. So let me flip over here. So, okay. So here is my side camera and this will give you a little bit better view of the paint puddle as I pour it. So I've got my cups and you can kind of see them. I'm going to begin and we'll see what happens. So I just want the paint to come out evenly at the same time. Okay. 
And here we go. So it's coming out nicely, I think. So just try to pour, pour even. This is kind of the trickiest part with this technique. Oop, I'm getting a... I'm getting a little funky here, so I'm going to stop, grab my drips and pull it away. And I have a little bit left in my cup. Let's see if I can... Excuse the interruption here. Yeah, I've got, these beakers are a little f funky to pour out of doing the double cup, but um, I have a little bit, uh, sorry for the delay. I've got a little bit of paint left in both of them. And sometimes with your cups, you'll notice that the paint doesn't want to come all the way out. I just transferred some of my paint into these smaller cups just to finish up. I've got to switch hands the pour. So that was kind of not the greatest. But we'll finish it up here and that looks pretty good. I'm gonna just grab that, oh shoot, I got a little mess up. So okay, so what I can do, so I have a little, this little tail kind of came off, which I'm not thrilled with. So what I'm gonna do is take some of my base coat and just put that right on top, kind of cover it up and fix it before I start tilting and all that. All right, tricky, tricky. Okay, let me flip back here to the top view. There we go. So we've, it looks like we've got tons of blue and not tons of our red, but don't worry about that. It will start to stretch out and uh, hopefully we'll get some very cool, interesting shapes going on. So now, normally what I would do, and I'm going to start off this way, but I might switch it up, is expand my paint puddle. So I'm going to kind of move this down, cover some more of the surface, kind of roll it around a bit. And it's looking, it's looking interesting. I'm liking that. So I'm going to take it down here and I'm going to pour off of this. Actually, wait a second. I'm going to pour off of this side a little bit, but I don't know if I'm going to pour off of that corner because it has an interesting line. So I'm going to kind of leave it there for a moment. So 
So again, I'm thinking of negative space. So I'm thinking about the composition a little bit more. And I kind of like that line also. So then the 18 by 24s are a little trickier to tilt. They're, for me, they're, they're almost to the uh, largest size I can tilt by hand. I'm just moving the paint around. I just I'm trying to make some interesting shapes, interesting designs. And I kind of like that right there. So let me flip this around. Just taking a, a peek at it and seeing if there's anything I want to change or tilt off. I really like this, pretty much this entire side of the painting. I'm just looking over here, debating about this corner. And um, I'm not sure. See, I'm trying to, I think I'm, I'm going to pour off this corner. I do like it, but all the corners have the blue. I want some variation. Um, so I think I'm going to pour this corner off. So just move the paint back down there. There we go. It might be hard to see, but it's coming. You can give it a little bit of help with your thumbs. Kind of pull it over the corner. I'm just moving the paint back. And there we go. And I kind of uh, like that. And uh, Barbara just said that, um, let me wipe my fingers off. She had a great point that uh, you could put some base coat down in this corner to help move the paint. Yes, you could use it as uh, some flow extender and that would help have pulled some of that paint off. Uh, that's a great point. Um, I didn't do it, of course, but, <laughs> but I might do it up here a little bit. Um, so let me turn this around. <clears throat> so 
So I, I like this, but it's kind of, I like this line right here, but right in here, it gets kind of cut off and it looks strange. There's like a, it's like a mistake. So what I'm going to do here is add some of that base coat to use as flow extender, just like Barbara mentioned. I'm going to push it up here against this, the colors. And what I want to do is just gently tilt this into that color and then <clears throat> it's a little tricky with the, the big canvas then tilt it out of that color Oops, let's see. I'm getting a lot of paint movement on the other side there, which I wasn't intending, but that's okay. But I basically, uh, if you do that, I'll point it out in a second here. Actually, I kind of like what happened there. I'm going to move the paint back down. Okay, there we go. Get this out of the way. So what that did is it just gave me a more uh, organic, interesting line along along here. It was really cut off before, so I added that little bit of the flow extender, tilted it around, and gave it a more unique, interesting shape. And we got a little paint rolling over this edge, but actually I kind of like that because uh, we have a lot of reds down here and it's nice to have some the blue broken up into these interesting sections so i'm actually pretty happy about that and i think that's it i think i'm at the end of my tilting for this one we did a lot of little kind of tricky things there but uh i think it turned out it's an interesting composition which i like We've got interesting shapes. And I'm pretty pleased with uh, with it overall. And we have that orange is it didn't like overwhelm the painting, which I was a little worried about because that orange is pretty bright. But we have these kind of nice passages of that bright orange and it's in our center of interest here, which I like. And we have our kind of crimson. And then we have a few, just the uh, dark color. That dark brown is in here, but it's not uh, super noticeable. It's kind of been, um, I don't know. It's, uh, I'd only use two layers instead of three layers, which I used more of the other colors. But it, it is in there, and I like, it's kind of subtle, which I like. So that is turned out pretty good I think I'm pretty happy with it and uh, I like the the blue uh, negative space and so we did get a, a nice negative space color nice negative space painting I should say and uh, with a lot of cool interesting things um, I've got a little paint here I'm just gonna even out actually that messed it up I'm just gonna pour on a little more of my base coat this is a little funky. Now, if your base coat is has some lumps in it and things, don't worry too much about it because it will dry flat. And you can go around and touch up any of the sides. If you have have missed any of the sides, you can touch those up. Uh, I'm not going to do, do that right now. I'll do that after we're done here. But... Uh, but just try to even out the base coat. If it's not perfectly smooth, that's okay. It will dry flat, and uh, it'll look it'll look uniform like uh, all the rest 
of the base coat. So there we go. And let's see. And uh, let's see what I want to do. I'm going to turn it here. I just want to see what it might look like the other way. I don't think I like it quite as much that way. But this might be a very interesting painting in the uh, a vertical format like this. I kind of like that format in a vertical. So we'll see. When it, once it's dry, you can take a look at it in all the different directions, see what you like best. And uh, but uh, I'll turn it back this way so you can get a get a peek. So it turned out pretty cool. So this is a very simple color palette. You could do something like this with pretty much any colors you wanted to. Uh, just one base coat color and then two or three uh, other colors in your in your second cup. Um, and you should get something, it'll obviously be different, but uh, you can get some very cool dynamic paintings like this with just very simple, very simple color scheme. So that is it. So let me flip back here. And uh, any final questions before we break? That was kind of a fast one. A lot of a little kind of picky pokey with some of that, but uh, turned out okay. Any questions you might have? Just checking to see if I missed anything. Well, thank you. Uh, thanks for the great comments. I'm glad everyone was pleased with the demo. It's always nice when that's a, a good demo. Oops, let's see. Let's see here. So, okay. <laughs> no questions, but uh, Lily said two for two for the double cup. Thanks, Lily. I'm, I'm happy that they both worked out. And thanks for that. Awesome. All right. Well, I guess that is it for our demo. Uh, happy with this one. It's going to stay on this canvas. I think it, it turned out pretty, pretty cool. Uh, it'll dry and it will be, um, you'll see it next week when we're, it's all dry. Uh, one thing, the last thing I wanted to mention though, is this orange I used, most of these colors, these lighter, brighter colors were all opaque colors, especially the orange. That's an opaque metallic orange. Uh, it's important if you wanted to try these uh, kind of bright, lighter colors uh, with like a darker base coat like this, try to use opaques um, so that when they dry, you don't have this opaque, this uh, like transparent orange or semi-transparent orange and blue will be kind of showing through. Uh, it will kind of muddy up the color when it dries. So just keep that in mind, like yellows, uh, and oranges, they come, a lot of them are semi-transparent or transparent. So try to use them or try to use um, opaque versions of them. If you're working with a, uh, like a, a darker base coat or a complementary color base coat like this, uh, if you're just working on a white canvas or a white base coat, then you can use the semi-transparents uh, or transparents. Those will work fine because the white will show through them when they dry and it will kind of actually add to the brightness. So, but just keep that in mind with the uh, opaques and uh, transparents. So, all right, with that, um, with that, I will say goodbye. I hope you have a fantastic weekend and uh, give a double cup pour a try if you want and share it in our group. That would be awesome. And uh, I will talk to you again next time. Thanks so much for watching everyone. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.